Being a business owner is an absolutely wonderful thing sometimes. The, the government wants you to do well and wants your business to succeed. It's good for the economy. And for that reason, they help your business thrive, including me getting a free truck. In this video, I'm gonna explain how tax deductions and write-offs work, as well as how the government is giving away free money to help you grow your business. And if you don't have a business, why it's so important that you get one set up. This is what it's all about. Let's get started. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what time you're watching this. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Welcome to my Flying Wheels YouTube channel. Today is a really, really fun video because I get to buy myself a new truck, one of my dream trucks, one of the trucks I've been looking for for quite a long time. Now, I own a 98 F-150 to plow my car dealership with. I also own a 2011 Duramax 2500 GMC Sierra Denali. It's so my accountant called me the other day and said, Craig, it's time to buy a new truck for your company. You need to go out and go shopping and get yourself a new truck because you made too much money last year. What a problem to have. Today I'm gonna go to the auction. We're gonna search through a bunch of trucks. Now in this video, I am not giving you financial or tax advice because everybody's position is different than mine. We each have our own positions. You should each have your own accountant to tell you what you can and cannot do. Now in this video, I'm gonna explain expenses to you, business expenses and write-offs. I'm gonna explain all of that. I'm not a multi-millionaire. I didn't make millions and millions, but according to your taxes, your net profit is what you're taxed on. So I'm gonna explain what that means. When you're a business owner and you make $100,000, well, you have business expenses incurred to make that $100,000. So if I bought a truck for $85,000 and sold it for $100,000, I didn't make $100,000. I only made $15,000. That's $100,000 minus $85,000. But there were also expenses to repair that truck. So let's say it cost me $1,000 to repair that truck to sell it for $100,000. Now I own it for $86,000. I sold it for $100,000. I only made $14,000. So instead of getting taxed on $100,000, I only get taxed on $14,000. That's business taxes explained very, very briefly. Now, please, please, please do not take my financial advice as your own. Seek an accountant to confirm everything. I am not giving you tax advice. I am not giving you financial advice. Everything I do, I ask my accountant before I do it. Hey, can I go buy a truck? Hey, can I spend this much money? How much money can I spend? Can I buy a trailer or is it better for me to pay a tow truck company? Now let's say this tow truck company right here. If I pay them all year, $100 a week, $400 a month, $4,800 a year, I write them a check. That is an expense because I have to get those cars back to my shop. Now, if I buy a trailer for $4,800 and I use it for three years, I actually just saved myself some money and I got to expense the trailer just like I would expense the tow truck company and I own a trailer. And every single year after my first year, I'm making money or saving money because I'm not spending $4,800 every single year on transportation services. Now, according to certain tax codes, your vehicle has to be a certain weight. I'll explain that at some point in this video. I don't really want a 1500 because I'm gonna be towing and I'm gonna be plowing. So I really want something heavier, more like a 2500 or a 3500. Now, talking about inventory versus a company vehicle, unless you're a car dealer, you don't really have to worry about your inventory vehicle, but I'm selling cars, that's inventory. I own those vehicles, they're expensive, but they have carrying costs. I own them and I can't write them off. It's a cost of goods sold. When I'm purchasing a vehicle for the company, a company vehicle, that's different. I'm gonna register it, I'm gonna insure it, and it's gonna be completely separate. It's not something that I have for sale. You also have to think of the purpose of the vehicle that you're writing off, that you're using as a business expense. This 392 Hemi Charger, I would love to drive it. Now, if I wrote my name all over it and I was a commuter vehicle that I was traveling a lot, possibly this could be a business expense. That, again, you'll have to seek an accountant for. But you'll notice a lot of CEOs will expense their Mercedes or their BMWs because they're using it for work-related purposes. So here we have an 07 Power Stroke. That's the six liter, 128,000 miles, Fisher plow setup, three plug, two plug. This really is too old for me. I have no purpose for this. This one comes with the plow. This is an F-150, a little too small for me, but here we go. An 11 F-350. 137,000 miles. This is pretty nice. A Lariat. Yeah, this might do it. I love these WeatherTech mats. Great for the winter and the leather. I would like a backup camera if I'm plowing, though. I don't really want to be backing into things. 
and just have a beeping at me all the time from these. I'd like to see where I'm going instead of just having backup sensors. But wait, there's more. 08 F250, 73,000 miles, Fisher Plow. This would do the trick. Good tires on it. Excuse me. But I really want leather interior. I'm going to be using this thing a lot. And again, who's to say a carpenter can't buy a better hammer, right? A better hammer, a better tool makes the job a little bit easier sometimes. So this doesn't really have all the options I think I'm going to need for business purposes. Now it also depends on the purpose of the vehicle for the company. A lot of companies will lease vehicles for their employees to drive. If they're on the road salesmen, it makes sense for the company to pay for their vehicle as a lease. They make that monthly expense. That monthly expense is deductible. So if the employee is making the company say $4,000 a month, it's worth them to spend $180 a month on a lease on a Mazda 3 or something. And it escalates from there depending on the purpose of the vehicle, depending on the value of the employee. But those monthly payments for the company, for the employee to make that company money is also an expense. Now don't get me wrong, I can't go buy my wife a minivan and then expense it, write it off as a company car, it's not. She's using it for personal reasons, I can't expense that. Part of my inventory and it's for sale, it's different. It's not expensive, but it is for sale. So when I sell it, I'm going to deduct the repairs. Essentially, she's test driving it for me. She gets to review the car, tell me what's wrong, tell me what's good about it. It helps me sell the car because I know that specific car. And then when I go sell it to a customer, say, this is the car my wife was driving. She knows the car, she loved the car. I put my kids in it, makes the customer feel better. So it's an incentive for the buyer to purchase it, knowing that I know that vehicle better than the other vehicles on my lot. So there's fine lines, there's gray areas that you need to know in the business without crossing the wrong line. Again, seek an accountant, don't use my advice, ask the accountant. I'm just bringing up questions and suggestions for you to ask the accountant. Now let's ask the question, Craig, what if you're making monthly payments or paying it in full? Well, if I'm making monthly payments, those payments are deductible. If I'm paying it in full, I'm gonna get to that in a few minutes. I'm gonna read this to you right now and explain this in better detail, according to the IRS website. So let's break this down according to tax code in section 179. What is section 179 deduction? Most people think it's a 179 deduction as some sort of mysterious or complicated tax code, but it's not. Essentially, the IRS code allows businesses to deduct the full purchase price of qualifying equipment and or software purchases or finance during the tax year. That means if you buy or lease a piece of qualifying equipment, you can deduct the full purchase price from your gross income. It's an incentive created by the U.S. government to encourage businesses to buy equipment and invest in themselves. Years ago, this was considered as the SUV tax loophole or the Hummer deduction because Hummers were so expensive. That's why so many business owners were driving Hummers when they originally came out. Here's how it works. In the past, when your business bought qualifying equipment, it typically wrote off as little at a time through depreciation. In other words, if your company spends $50,000 on a machine, it gets to write off $10,000 a year for five years. Now, while it's true that this is better than no write-offs at all, most business owners would really prefer to write off the entire equipment purchase price for the year they buy it. And that's exactly what Section 179 does. So what are the limits of Section 179? It does come with limits, and there are some caps on the total amount. $1,050,000 for 2021 and limits to the total amount of equipment purchase can be $2,620,000. Who qualifies? All businesses that purchase, finance, or lease new or used business equipment during tax year 2021 should qualify. What's the difference between the deduction and bonus depreciation? Bonus depreciation is offered some years and some years it isn't. Right now in 2021, it's being offered at 100%. Now let's say I wanna go buy a 2021 Corvette Stingray convertible. How do I expense that as a car dealer? Well, I mean, with marketing purposes, these are, these are the really gray areas that you have to seek an accountant's advice for. But as a YouTuber, guess what I can do? Write my name all the way across it, make videos for it constantly, do upgrades for it, and every time I do an upgrade, I make a video that makes the upgrade and the parts expensive. That is a horse of a different color. Now I'm talking as a YouTuber, not as a car dealer. When I get you to watch my videos because I bought a brand new Corvette and YouTube pays me, well that Corvette got you to watch me and I got paid based on the Corvette. Now that Corvette is expensive, right? That's the purpose of the Corvette. I bought the Corvette so you'd watch my videos and then I got paid on it. And then I could put my name all over it, Flying Wheels, youtube.com slash Flying Wheels. Everyone I drive by sees this flashy 21 Corvette and they say, who's this? 
oh, Flying Wheels YouTube, what's that? Then they go to my Flying Wheels YouTube channel. It helps grow my channel. Marketing 101, right? This would do it. We have the Fisher push plates, 250,000 miles, 32,000 on motor, stage three turbo tuner, EGR delete, no cats, bulletproof. Well, this thing's pretty crazy, but I really feel like I want class more than muscle truck. Well, the day's over and here's my new toy. 68,000 mile Duramax Denali crew cab with a stainless steel Fisher plow. This thing is nasty. This is what I needed. This fit my budget. I am so pumped. Pearl white, 20 inch wheels. That made me very happy. That is exactly what I wanted. So I want to discuss business expenses versus personal expenses. Let's say you're not a business owner. Let's just say you work a regular job and you get a regular paycheck. Well, you get $1,000 a week minus your taxes. Let's say your take home is $700. Well, you're doing an at-home project and you need to purchase a hammer. That hammer is $20. Well, that hammer comes out of your own pocket. That comes out of your earned income, your $700 from the week. Now, let's say you're a carpenter. You just got a contract to build a deck for somebody. Well, you need a hammer. Well, without that hammer, you're not going to be able to build that deck. And if you're not able to build that deck, you're not able to make any money. Therefore, you need that hammer to make money. That makes your hammer an expense. So before you get paid on that deck, you can go and buy yourself a hammer and it is a business expense. It's a write-off because you need that hammer for your business to make money. Now here's a perfect example. My trailer doesn't take a two inch ball, it takes a two and five sixteenth inch ball. So I need a new ball for my truck. Well, I'm not gonna go use my personal money to buy a ball because it's for the company. So the company needs to purchase a ball to tow the trailer with the new truck to get it to the shop, right? Because without any of that, I can't make any money. Therefore, the ball is a business expense. So I'm gonna use the company credit card to purchase the new ball to use on my new truck to tow the trailer to go make some money. Therefore, all are expensable because they're all for business purposes. Take that one right there. And for you to make money, your business needs to make money. So that hammer is an expense. So let's say you make $1,000 off of that deck. Well, the hammer cost you 20, so you actually made 980. Well, how much did the materials cost? How much was the pressure treated wood? How much was the framing? How much was the nails? All of those things are expensed as well. Well, the same goes for my business. If I need to tow a vehicle, I need a trailer. Now, a trailer might be $2,500. Now, you might say, Craig, that's a lot of money. How are you going to expense that? Now, look at it this way. Yes, I need a trailer to tow cars back to my shop to sell them to make money for my business to be profitable An expense. The tongue, I need to tow the trailer to get the cars back to sell the cars to make money. Now I need a truck to tow the trailer. So the truck is an expense because I need to tow the cars back to my shop to make money. Now, now when it snows at my shop, if I can't move the cars around in the parking lot, I can't make money. So guess what I need? A plow. So the plow is a business expense because I need the plow to push the snow so I can move the cars around so I can sell the cars so I can make some money. So much easier because I had the right tool for the job. So here we go. I got my ball, I got my tongue. Everything's expensible and I use a credit card 100% of the time to track my expenses. And that's not the only reason I use a credit card. Do not use your debit card ever. I accumulate points by using my credit card. That's number two. So at the end of the year, I rack up a ton of points, which either pays you back in cash or travel points, depending on your credit card. Now I paid off every single month because I don't like to accumulate debt. So every single month I pay off the credit card. I don't spend what I can't afford. That's number three, so two or three. Two is the points, three is I don't spend what I can't afford. Number four. Number four is because using a debit card gives everybody access to your money. They give access to your cash. Why use your cash when you can use it on credit? Use other people's money and then pay it off at the end of the month. Plus with scams. Oh no, I think I just stepped in trouble. Plus with scams, if you use your debit card and somebody gets a hold of your account, shut up. If you use your debit card and somebody gets a hold of your account, that's your money you're taking. Now your bank doesn't care as much about your money as much as they do about their money. So if you use a credit card using their money and something goes wrong or some fraud, all you do is hit fraud alert, 
the bank challenges it and you're taken care of because it's not your money. If you use a debit card and it comes out of your account, it's your money. It's going to take months for you to get your money back trying to fight with the bank and figure out who stole your money. So there are lots of reasons to use a business credit card more than just your debit card. And lastly, I'm not sure what point I'm at, but at the end of the year, I basically just hit print and it categorizes all my expenses for me depending on what credit card you have. Now let's go back to the carpenter. Who's to say that carpenter can't go buy a $50 hammer? Is the IRS going to say, Mr. Craig, you're not allowed to spend $50 on a hammer. You can only spend $20 on a hammer. No, it's the same with the vehicle. Who's to say I can't go buy a better vehicle according to the regulations of the IRS? Now this is the stuff you're going to have to seek an accountant with. You can't just go and buy everything and expense things. Do not use me as your accountant or financial or legal or tax advice. This is just suggestions and you should refer to your accountant before doing any of this. I don't want to be responsible for the tax man, but is the tax man allowed to say, Craig, you can only drive a single cab four by four that weighs a certain amount and under a certain price? No, because what if I need to tow a three car trailer? That might necessitate a 3,500 pickup instead of a 25 or a 1,500 pickup. That's more money, right? Well, that is an expense. Now, let's say I'm only making $20,000 this year. That money is still your money if you're the business owner. So why would you go spend $50,000 on a truck when your company only made $20,000 this year? Yes, your truck is an expense, but it doesn't financially or fiscally make any sense. So everything has to be within reason because you're still paying for it. The government isn't buying your truck for you. You're still making the payments on the So there you go. Taxes 101, how to run your business and use expenses in your favor. That truck deducted another $50,000 off of my income for the year. That's how it saved me all that money. Now I don't get taxed on that truck. I actually get to use it as an expense according to my accountant, and I'm gonna verify all of that, which you should do as well. So this video just saved you at least the cost of a college course because I learned this in life lessons and I use examples for you guys. I hope it was entertaining. I hope it was informative and educational. If it was, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe if you have not subscribed yet. I'll see you all later in the next.